Hey guys, welcome back to RBR. Look what I'm standing next to. This is not your daddy's EQ card. This is something completely different. And it's something that kind of tells you what's gonna happen in the future when it comes to Mercedes and electric. And I think generally Mercedes cars going in the future. This is a Harbringer and a very real Harbringer. This is not a concept car that's made of clay and plastic and other bits. This is as road legal as a development car can get. It runs in entirety. The EDU unit is completely real. The batteries, every single element of this car, even in the interior, is completely real. So what I'm showing you today is stuff that has been developed and works in real world. This is not theoretical stuff, guys. This is a real thousand kilometer beast. Now, when it comes to EVs, what's your biggest problem? It's range. How do you add more range? Well, either you can add a massive and heavy battery, as we see with our EQS, for example, which is a hulking car at almost two and a half tons. Or you can look at aerodynamics, but then your car can end up looking again like a gigantic Prius or an egg. How then do you try and get the best of both worlds? Well, Mercedes have gone about this in a completely different way. Instead of adding a giant battery, they've got a battery that's actually smaller and lighter, but has the same energy. Instead of having a car that looks like an egg, they've got something that kind of reminds you of AMG's Project One hypercar. So what Mercedes have done here is change absolutely everything else compared to what we're normally used to when it comes to trying to add range. And what they've done is focused on efficiency. And they're calling efficiency the currency for the future. And what they're trying to do is use less things to give us more benefits. So this is a fascinating concept. And it's a car, like I said, that can achieve a thousand kilometers on a single charge. And again, I want to repeat, not theoretical, this baby actually works. So guys, right now, I imagine you're trying to get your head around the design of this thing. And I'll be the first to admit, very difficult to capture on camera, but I'm gonna take you around it near the tail end of the video to give you an up close and personal look, not just outside, but inside, like I said, totally working vehicle here, including the software. So really impressive stuff. And what I found amazing is that they've gone from a zero sheet, a blank slate of paper to this finished working vehicle within 18 months, which is insane. And I'll fill you in a little bit as to how they did that. But first of all, this is an EV. We're talking about range. Let's first dive into the battery. And when you're trying to get efficiency out of every single kilojoule, who better to turn to within your group than Mercedes high performance powertrains who work with F1. And that's exactly what Mercedes-Benz have done. They've partnered with the guys at Bricksworth who know a little bit about getting energy when you need it. And they've created a whole new battery pack for this car. And it's an impressive thing. It only weighs 480 kg. Compared to something like the EQS, it's 50% less volume, it's 30% lighter, yet it has almost the exact same in terms of the kilojoules within it. We're talking 100 kilowatts worth of power within this battery. Then you look at how much it actually expends, it's only 10 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers or six miles per kilowatt hour. So you're looking at 1,000 kilometers, around about 620 miles from a single charge. This is the road trip car, right? Then you look at the electric drive unit, once again developed by high performance powertrains. And in fact, this unit, which houses our electric motor, our transmission, power electronics, etc., sh is shared in part with the AMG1 hypercar. So you can see the type of learning coming into this future concept and then therefore coming into all Mercedes cars, hopefully, in the future. Another point about the battery is that it's so small that it could fit into something of the size of an A-Class as well which is incredible. What's the final weight of the car? It's only 1740 kg, which is incredible. Now, size-wise, we're talking kind of C-class size. It's that type of uh, wheelbase. Um, so it's a small, compact saloon, which I love. I don't like massive cars. And at that weight, you know, you're looking up to something that's kind of C63 weight, but it's an EV that does 1,000 kilometers, which is, again, you know, that's incredible. Now, when we talk about efficiency, all of those things that we've discussed, a normal combustion car can transfer something like 30% of its actual ability of power onto the road and onto the wheels. This car is so efficient that it transfers 95% of 
onto road. That's not the only method that the car has to generate energy. You see that lovely roof there? Those are actually solar panels and they are used to power the car's internal electronics and give you range of up to 40 kilometers per day. And that's all done just from the panels on the top of the car, again, which is incredible. Now let's talk a little bit about the body and white because the way that they constructed this was insane. They didn't actually make the body and white themselves. It was left to a computer generator or a, what they're calling bionic generator in order to create this strange web-like structure that is as solid, if not more than your typical structure, but then uses that much less material because as you can see, it's got holes all around it, yet fulfills the exact same need of rigidity and strength that this car needs. And that carries over onto things all around the car, even something bizarre like the wiper blade holder here, looks like something that Spider-Man made. Um, but this is allowing computers and technology to do things that humans just can't, and then letting the humans take over and use their skills within 3D, etc., in order to make it viable for series production. Like I said, everything used here can be used in series production as well. Indeed, the subframe, again, F1 derived and inspired, so really impressive stuff in terms of that. Then we come on to aerodynamics. And again, an aerodynamic beast by Mercedes. You thought the EQS was good at 0.2 CD. This is 0.18. Now Mercedes have a bit of a history when it comes to making aerodynamic concepts. When we look back at the concept IAA, for example, very similar shape to this. And I'll go into that when we walk around it. I'll go even further back to the C111. You can see that they had their eye on the game. But again, this is a car that works on the road, very close to production. So fascinating to see them actually achieve it. And what I love about that is the actual design of it. So what I want to do now, I want to take you around it. I want to show you some of those aerodynamic elements, how they work, where it's being saved, and show you the design. Because to me, it looks like a four-door Project One that kind of had a baby with a uh, IA concept, which is, it's lovely. You guys know I don't like the EQ current design family, the way the, the front looks, etc. This just works for me. So let's have a look around and see what we think of it. Okay guys, this is gonna give you a much better idea. This is my favorite angle, I think, where you get those Project One vibes, which I absolutely love. Actually standing here, I'm getting a bit of an R8 vibe as well, particularly from the lights. I'd love to know what you guys think. But then, you know, this, this area here, all of this is very, what they call sensual purity that, you know, Gordon Wagner likes to talk about. It's very, very Mercedes-Benz, that, that element. As I get closer, you can see the star pattern, which has replaced the grill. I don't think a grill is needed. It's a bit silly on an EV personally. Um, and even here, just like the Project One, we've got a painted Mercedes-Benz star, which is glorious. Paint finish, alu beam silver, as you would have first seen on the SLS in every single concept car that Mercedes makes. A really good paint finish to kind of show off the details. But one of the coolest things here on the front particularly, check out the light design. Those are Mercedes-Benz stars. Those are. How cool is that? And I'm sure that this is something that will translate into our future car headlights, which will be so much better than just having the tick because that's branding, right? You should know that there's a Mercedes coming up behind you. So really nice, really nice on the front end. Again, very, very Project One. You've got your, again, air releases here, very much like the NACA ducts you might see on a GT3 RS or something. Um, but the thing that I actually liked the most in the front end was the A pillar in the windscreen if I showed you a shot of the Project One in the exact same position, you'd think that this is that car. And again, all of this is working. Bit of a sneak preview of the interior there, which is quite glorious. But that look there, that is quite stunning, right? Now, in terms of aerodynamic efficiency, this area, very, very efficient around the wheel. You've got your air curtain where the air comes through. You can see how flat the wheel is. It's still got some excitement here. The alloys are interesting quite AMG-like, I think. And there's a bit of a bulge on this. Rose gold, you know, Gordon Wagner, absolutely obsessed with the stuff. So it's all over the concept, but you know, it looks all right. But very aerodynamically efficient, as you can see on the readout that we have here. The air flows through the air breather on this side and hardly any resistance in one of the areas that causes the most problems uh, when it comes to aerodynamics, so very impressive. In fact, even our tires here, these Bridgestone tires, specifically made for good aerodynamics and less resistance. So every single area that's being looked at, nice little logo here, kind of like we have on uh, EQS today. 
Another note on the wheels is these are magnesium wheels, which again, you'd find on something like, you know, GT3 RS YSAC package in order to save weight. Being used here in EQXX, again, the exact same purpose of uh, weight saving. The side on view is glorious. This is where you see that concept IAA coming through. That roof line is absolutely perfect. It's great for aerodynamics as well, but in terms of being, you know, very kind of CLS, etc., very Mercedes Benz, it also works in that regard. You're seeing things now that you'll see in other Mercedes Benz, like the flush door handles of the S Class here, which work in the exact same way. And then you see a glorious interior inside that I'll show you very quickly in a minute. Let me come around the rear here. And I have to show you something very, very cool on that lower diffuser because, again, aerodynamically optimized and it moves, and boy, does it move. Now, an interesting fact of the design of this car is that the rear is slightly slimmer than the front, which is it's usually a no-no, and design teams don't like doing that, and they were having a bit of a battle here. But it's 50 millimeters shorter, or slimmer rather, but you can't really tell because the car has such muscular shoulders, both on front and rear, and I think they've done a really good job of kind of masking that element. Of course, all done for aerodynamic efficiency. Love to know what you guys think of this rear tail light. It's something to get used to, I think. I think perhaps a more traditional one would be easier for us to swallow at the moment. Not sure we're that ready for Back to the Future. And then uh, again, a painted star on the rear. Roof is awesome with the solar panels. Looks really impressive. Overall, it's quite the sight to behold this car when walking around it. And I'd love to know what you guys think of it. For me, as a Mercedes fan, I much prefer something like this to what we got with EQS. This to me, sporty, bit of CLS, bit of all the past aerodynamic concepts, bit of Project One coming all into a car that merges this idea of efficiency in a pretty amazing way. Good morning. I am looking forward to our trip to the coast. We have plenty of range in our batteries, so I'm not planning for any charging stops. So guys, here we are inside the EQXX. Like I said, this is a working concept. You see the actual Mercedes-Benz steering wheel that we used to out of our latest S-Class um, with this really interesting looking 3D printed trim that you'll see across the car. And I'll show you that in a minute. First of all, the highlight which I think has been done so much better again than what we saw in EQS is the giant screen in front of us because first of all, it's an actual single piece screen rather than being three little screens, etc. Secondly, the technology, much more like OLED, where you've got specific lighting zones. So like if you're driving at night, the black areas won't be lit up. It will just be pitch black. Um, so this is a big leap forward in terms of you know, user usability. Now I'm gonna show you all the little details around here. Let's get closer, let's have a look, because it's quite interesting. Now all the materials that you're seeing here in the interior are actually sustainable. So for example, our leather here is not normal leather, I believe it's cactus-based leather. Can you believe that? Cactus-based. And like our carpet here is, I think, sugarcane-based, but it just feels like normal plush carpet. It's really clever and you've got stuff like Dynamica like you find in AMG, for example. Rose gold everywhere, like I said, look at these vents. They do work. Um, interesting, this is the trim I was talking about. So again, looks good. We've got a hazard, hazard lights here. Um, again, ambient lighting flowing throughout. I love the screen, this is what I mean. This is not intrusive, it actually works quite nice. You've got a nice dashboard behind there, which is cool. Again, these shapes, which are very interesting, the 3D printed shapes. This is again a man-made silk that they made themselves. 3D printed design over Dynamica here. Again, that element of the 3D printed design. This is cool. You know, this is very, very different compared to what we've seen in the past. And I would love to drive this actually. And I'm bugging them I'm saying, look, let's do some kind of road trip. If you're saying it works, if you're saying it does a thousand kilometers, let us test it. There's the rear seats, it looks a little bit cramped in there in the back, but you'd kind of forgive it. Now you thought the roof might be open, it's not, because we've got the solar panels in there. But um, it's, it's like a sports sedan, isn't it? This is, this is, I think, what you want. 
So guys, that is your EQXXX. What a stunning thing, outside and in. I would love to see whether this can actually do what they're claiming in terms of the mileage. I'm gonna bug them about it. Let's see if we can do a thousand kilometers in this one day. If you've enjoyed this, as always, please do like, and most of all, subscribe to RBR. This has been a blast, and I'll see you guys next time.